Welcome to our first small group session of 2019. In our sessions this month, we'll discover together how we can find an indication of Jesus in the Psalms and how Jesus' knowledge of the Psalms assisted him during his earthly life. It may seem odd that we're looking at a book that's found in the Old Testament to look for Jesus, but we need to be conscious that, in fact, the entire Bible points to him. We can find references to him throughout the books of the law, the historical books, the books of wisdom, and the writings of the prophets. Many times Jesus directed people's attention to what was written about him so that they would recognize that he was the promised Messiah, foretold about for centuries. He brought the words of the Old Testament to their fullest realization. These things are prevalent in Psalm 22, where we will begin our study this month. Psalm 22 is a Psalm of David. It is interesting that it begins with a lament, but by its end, it becomes a Psalm of praise. This Psalm not only describes an experience that every believer can relate to, but it is also a specific prophecy of the suffering of Jesus. Let's take a look at three passages from this psalm and see how Jesus fulfilled the words of David. The psalm begins with the following. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not hear, and in the night season, and I'm not silent. What an agonizing prayer of David. He puts words to his experience of feeling alone and abandoned by God. Jesus echoes these words while on the cross, as recorded for us in the Gospels of Matthew and Mark. As Jesus experienced this dire moment in his life, crucifixion on the cross, the words of the psalmist are on his lips. He seeks a connection with God, the Father, but because of the weight of sin being laid upon him, the Father seems distant. Jesus uses David's words to express his anguish at this moment. Yet, make a note that David still trusts in his relationship with God, as the use of the words, my God, tell us. He didn't relinquish his knowledge of his God, and he demonstrated his trust in him to be faithful and to deliver him. During your times of suffering, how do you call out to God? Do you seek his presence as a loving father? Are the words of the scripture on your lips? Let's continue by looking at verses 6 through 8. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men, and despised by the people. All those who see me ridicule me. They shoot out the lip. They shake the head, saying, He trusted in the Lord. Let him rescue him. Let him deliver him, since he delights in him. David's faith in God is being challenged by his enemies. He is being mocked for his faith because of the difficult circumstance that he finds himself in. Now listen to the words of Matthew describing the scene at the cross of Jesus. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and another on the left. And those who passed by blasphemed him, wagging their heads and saying, You who destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself! And if you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests also, mocking with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he is the King of Israel, let him come down now from the cross, and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him. The words spoken at the cross help us realize that the words of the psalmist were prophetic in their foreshadowing of the experience of Jesus. Just like the psalmist, Jesus suffered insults, mocking, and his relationship with God was called into question by others. Lastly, in verses 16 through 18, Psalm 22 reads, For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They look and stare at me. They divide my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Approximately 1,000 years later, these words are echoed in all of the gospel accounts of Jesus' crucifixion. Whether aware of it or not, David, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, described his feelings of despair and anguish, 
and they described what would happen to Jesus. Isn't it incredible how the story of the Bible fits together? When we look at this from our perspective, we could often think, how could the people of that time fail to see God's plan? Perhaps a better, more self-reflective question is, what are we missing that God has so clearly laid out for us? As we read through the Psalms today, we should be keenly aware of the statements that tell of Jesus. Indeed, Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. This knowledge serves to strengthen and build our faith. These passages serve to encourage us, like the psalmist, as we live through challenging moments when we may feel separated from God. Looking at what the psalmist wrote and what we learn from the life of Jesus, remember in these moments that God is your Heavenly Father. Reach out and seek Him in prayer, and through it all, praise Him, for all that He has done, is doing, and will do.